the CDC has just released its latest guidelines for the resumption of cruising here in the US. And guess what? The cruise lines aren't happy. Why? Well, in this video, we take a detailed look at these new cruise requirements to analyze if cruising can really resume here in the US anytime soon. Hey everyone, I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, and I don't wanna say we told you so, but last week, we detailed several of the obstacles the cruise lines are going to face if they're truly gonna resume cruising here in the US by July. Now, many individuals all over social media and here on YouTube were celebrating the letter the CDC sent to the cruise lines, indicating that if cruise lines opted for vaccinated cruises, they could skip the simulated voyage requirement of the conditional sailing order. Now, many interpreted this as that cruising is back and that's a green light for the cruise lines. Well, after the release Wednesday afternoon of the new technical instructions for simulated voyages, as well as the COVID-19 operations manual for the simulated and restricted voyages, honestly, that's simply just not the case. These new guidelines detail what the cruise lines need to do in order to get their ships back up and running here in the US. Now, you can take a look back on our blog. We detail all of the requirements for the simulated voyages. However, we're not gonna focus on those today because quite honestly, I think many of the cruise lines are gonna opt to skip that requirement because it's even more ridiculous what the cruise lines need to do to actually conduct simulated voyages. Instead, cruise lines like Norwegian Cruise Line, for example, are probably going to opt for the restricted passenger voyages. So they're going to try to implement the CDC requirements on voyages where you have paying customers. Now, speaking of Norwegian Cruise Line, the chairman and CEO, Frank Del Rio, had some not so nice words for the CDC. During an earnings call on Thursday morning, he indicated he was disappointed in these new rules and found them to be onerous and in part preposterous. In a separate interview, when asked about returning to service, Del Rio said he seriously doubted that they could stand up a vessel in July and that August was in jeopardy because of the disjointed guidelines from the CDC. He further stated that the recent update was anything but a clear path to restarting cruising. He specifically called out some of the requirements in the recent proposal as absurd and outrageous, noting that these requirements occur nowhere else in the world. He later stated that the CDC treatment of the cruise lines was unfair and even un-American and he called on this treatment to stop. He remained dumbfounded why the CDC is continuing to mandate such onerous requirements on the cruise industry. And quite frankly, I think many cruisers feel exactly the same way. Now, what was also interesting is that Del Rio flatly said that given these new guidance, there's no way Norwegian Cruise Line holding ships can be operational for July. He did indicate in that call that the cruise line needs at least 90 days to be up and running. However, given the new guidelines, it could take even longer than that. Well, what exactly are in these new guidelines? Well, for starters, the CDC is not outright requiring vaccines for cruise lines to room service in 2021. Although the CDC is recommending in their preventative measures that cruise lines incorporate vaccination strategies. So technically cruise lines can resume without requiring guests or even crew to receive the vaccine. But to do so, they'll have to undergo simulated voyages, which also has a laundry list of its own complications. In addition to Norwegian Cruise Lines indicating they're gonna have 100% vaccinated cruises, other cruise lines have shown a willingness to require guests to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises are requiring guests over 18 to be vaccinated for initial sailings occurring outside of the US. Still other cruise lines like Carnival Cruise Line have not made official statements on passenger vaccines. Still the other major cruise lines have not indicated their plans for vaccinations for cruises departing from US home ports. Now, all along, we expected the CDC would require face coverings on board cruise ships. These new requirements confirm this expectation. Although we were very surprised that the CDC was adamant about facial covering use when on the outdoor decks, even with social distancing measures. The CDC is requiring cruise lines to quote, ensure bathers wear masks while congregating outside of recreational water facilities and while seated on the pool deck area. Now, of course, that's just ridiculous. Even the CDC has come out and said that individuals who are vaccinated do not need to wear masks when outdoors. So the fact that the cruise lines are required to implement social distancing measures, as well as still require guests to wear masks on outdoor decks, in Frank Del Rio's words, is just preposterous. Not to mention, they further go to state that individuals need to wear masks while in line for certain water activities like slides. What are individuals going to do with those masks? What happens when you get to the top of the slide and you actually have to go down? Thankfully, at least, 
the CDC is not requiring you to wear your face mask in actual pools or whirlpools. When it comes to wearing a face mask indoors, of course, that's also a requirement. Now, when it comes to dining, here in Massachusetts, you have to wear your mask into a restaurant and while you're seated until you order with your waitress or waiter, and then you take your mask off for the remainder of the meal. According to the CDC, they're allowing for the temporary removal of masks while dining or at bars and lounges. Although it also states that the removal of the mask for extended meal service or beverage consumption is a violation of the current order. So are the cruise lines literally going to have to enforce you wearing your mask in between different courses at the main dining room? Will you literally need to take your mask on and off as you take a sip from a drink at a bar? Now this requirement flies in the face of everything that we've been doing here on land. It's actually an example of the double standard we talked about last week as one of the obstacles to why cruising would not resume in July. Now the new requirements also have a number of guidelines for increasing physical distancing on ships. And now for the most part, these are predictable and pretty common sense restrictions. Many of them are the same suggestions that the cruise lines have put out there in their proposals to resume cruising. The CDC requires that changes be made to dining facilities, entertainment facilities, and recreational areas to ensure that there is six feet apart between cruisers. The CDC indicates this can be done by rearranging venues or by simply blocking out sections to allow for adequate spacing. Social distancing measures must also include using mockers and signage and stairwells and near elevators to encourage and remind individuals to keep apart from other parties. Guidelines call for reduced capacity on elevators and including markers to allow for proper distancing. These guidelines apply to most public areas, which include gyms, casinos, and public restrooms. As we mentioned earlier, when it comes to outdoor decks, social distancing must also be maintained for deck chairs and other seating. Social distancing must also be maintained in water facilities such as pools, whirlpools, and other features such as splash pads and water slides. Among some of the recommendations the CDC has is the use of reservation systems for venues like entertainment venues, restaurants, and even gyms and casinos. The CDC also suggests certain stairwells be used for one-way traffic and also recommends the use of wearable technology. There are also several changes to restaurants and other entertainment facilities when cruising in 2021. Now, along with making changes to room layouts and capacity limits to comply with physical distancing, cruise ships must eliminate all self-service dining and beverage stations. So say goodbye to the traditional buffet. The same rule applies for beverage carts or self-service ice cream stands. Cruise lines must install physical barriers in areas where it's difficult for individuals to maintain proper social distancing. This could include ordering areas for different venues, such as a coffee shop, as well as pickup counters for food. The CDC is also requiring cruise lines to use technology to facilitate queuing to reduce congestions, which of course we're actually big fans of. This can include smartphone apps or other means of alerting individuals when their table is ready. These venues must also include signage and floor markers to help maintain social distancing while waiting to be seated or other areas where lines can form. The CDC also requires cruise lines to provide alternative dining options. These could include al fresco dining when possible, as well as the addition of more in-room dining possibilities. Now, if this means free room service for everyone, sign us up because we would love to take advantage of that perk. Further, sharing items is prohibited. So cruise ships need to utilize disposable menus or digital alternatives, single service condiments, and methods that prevent handling of utensils by more than one person. And honestly, restaurants here on land have been doing the same thing for months now, at least where we live. So this is a welcome change. Among some of the recommendations, the CDC suggests offering more grab and go food options. In addition, the CDC recommends providing order ahead options to allow guests to pre-select items at certain restaurants. Similar to cruises outside the US, the CDC confirmed that it's prohibiting individuals from independently exploring ports of call. This means cruisers will not be allowed to freely roam their destinations. And say cruisers will need to go ashore on cruise line vetted shore excursion. As part of these new guidelines, the CDC is requiring cruise lines to review and evaluate tours to ensure they comply with the proper health and safety measures. Among the requirements are face masks and social distancing during all parts of the tour. This also means limiting capacity of shore excursions. Tour operators must also observe proper sanitation and disinfection practices to meet the CDC's guidelines. 
Now we know that not being able to explore ports on their own is a big deal breaker for many cruisers. Unfortunately, it looks like that policy will be in place for the initial cruises from the US. As you would expect, these requirements also included a number of preventative measures, as well as specific medical and technical changes that the cruise lines must implement on cruise ships. Cruise ships must advise passengers of the health and safety protocols required prior to cruising, as well as the inherent risk of cruising during a pandemic. Cruise ship operators must also ensure that proper hand hygiene is routinely enforced with facilities routinely stocked with proper supplies. And having cruised on over 30 cruises, we feel this is something that the cruise lines already do. Now cruise lines must also make sure that they have enough medical supplies and PPE. The CDC is also requiring a number of protocols for record keeping and tracing of medical events on board cruise ships. These records should be maintained to help with surveillance and contact tracing if cases occur on board cruise ships. The cruise ships also have to maintain a functioning laboratory. And these facilities have to meet the CDC guidelines for conducting and analyzing COVID-19 tests on board vessels. Also, each cruise ship must maintain a written infection prevention and control plan. Now, this plan needs to detail standard procedures and policies to specifically address infection control and cleaning and disinfection procedures to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Of course, the operations manual details the instructions and all the provisions the plan must include to satisfy the CDC cruise requirements. Now, if that seems like a lot to require of the cruise lines, we agree with you. Now, of course, CLIA has also come out in response to this plan indicating that there is a lot of work to do to achieve the goal of sailing from the US ports this summer. Which brings us back to our original prediction from last week. While cruise lines can opt out of the simulated voyages by having 98% of crew and 95% of passengers vaccinated, there's still many hurdles they have to overcome to implement policies, procedures, and changes on board cruise ships to satisfy the CDC. But these just seem unreasonable. In clear statement, they reference the success that cruise lines are having outside the US implementing common sense health and safety protocols. So that is a detailed look at the latest CDC cruise guidelines. Of course, we'll keep you up to date as cruise lines responds to this latest set of requirements. If you enjoyed this video, you can take a look at some of our other videos that look at all the changes coming to cruising due to COVID-19. Also, if you're planning on cruises this year, you probably want to check out our top picks for the best cruise ships of 2021. Make sure to subscribe down below and reach out to us all over social media at Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time.